Hello, it's Scott Manley here, and today we are going to take a virtual tour of the International Space Station. It's one of these 360 videos you can point the camera in any direction you like, so enjoy the view. This is all rendered inside Space Engine, and the model is supplied by a modder called Harbinger who used a real NASA model. Right now, we are floating along the long axis of the Space Station. This is the truss segment. It was built in multiple parts, and it's essentially an open girder formation that provides a backbone upon which to attach things such as solar panels, radiators, and uh, various spare parts. As we reach the middle of the station, this is where all the pressurized laboratories and habitation modules are attached. If you look down, you can see the robot arm here. That's actually on a car which can move up and down the truss to wherever it's needed. The Canadian arm was of course incredibly important since the space station was built on orbit. The first modules were launched in 1998 and construction really continued proper until 2011, although there are still things being changed. A module was moved this year and we expect a module to be added next year and there's future hardware still to be flown. Anyway, we're coming out towards the far end of the station and we want to take a look at these solar panels. These solar arrays come in pairs that are 12 meters across, over 30 meters long. They can rotate in two axes to track the sun as it moves through the orbit. And if you look very carefully, you can see that I have added an astronaut there just standing right below us just to give you an idea of the massive scale of this station. It's about 100 by 70 by 20 meters in size, over 400 tons. And at orbital speeds, that gives it more kinetic energy than any other man-made object. Now we're going to approach the station in the direction of travel. The rearmost module is the Zvezda service module. It provides many of the core services of the station, including the majority of the life support. This was the third module launched, but it was the one that made the space station habitable. Now, the module hanging down on our left isn't actually on the space station. This is the Nauka science module, which has yet to be launched. The next component is Zarya, which was the first module to be launched. And if you look ahead, we're just about to pass under the Quest airlock. This is the airlock used by US astronauts to perform EVAs. The Russian segment has its own airlock for its own EVA needs. Now, the agreements that made this collaboration happen have led to a certain delineation in the station. There is actually Russian territory at the rear and international territory towards the front of the station. The Soyuz and Progress spacecraft dock on the rear section, whereas the Dragon, the Cygnus and other cargo spacecraft dock on the front. Now, as we move closer to the station, we can get a better idea of the layout of some of these modules. Now, this large cylindrical module coming down is the Leonardo module. It's actually not in this location anymore. The, the model is a little bit dated. It's actually moved up to the top left there. If you see the cupola module, which provides the best view in the galaxy, that is attached to the tranquility node, which is a general purpose module. It's attached there now, and we'll also be seeing the Bigelow expanded activity module attached to that. Now to the right of that we have a uh, Rasfit again, you can get a better look at it. That was the only Russian module launched by the space shuttle and it actually includes a lot of extra cargo bundled with it attached to the outside. It even includes spare parts for the European robot arm which has not yet launched. The pressurized module in the middle is Unity. That was the second part to be launched and the first American module to be launched. It's a general structural component. And on top of that, we have the Z1 truss segment, which is an unpressurized module providing some important uh, hardware. But originally, the rest of the truss bolted onto that during construction. Now it's no longer attached to all that, and it's mainly retained for its communications hardware, control moment gyroscopes, and the plasma contactors, which are very important for neutralizing the electrical charge of the station. And now we come to the front of the station, which is actually a whole lot simpler than original proposals. Between budget cuts in 2002 and the 2003 Columbia disaster, a number of key modules from NASA were cut, uh, including the habitation module, the X-38 return vehicle, uh, the centrifuge module, and various other bits of hardware. 
But we do have a number of important labs. On the left, we have Columbus, which is the Europeans' main research laboratory. In the middle there, we have Harmony, which is a structural node that has a docking adapter out of the front. That's where the space shuttle used to dock. On the top and the bottom of Harmony, we also have docking ports for things like the Dragon and the Cygnus. And behind that, you can't actually see, there's another cylindrical mo uh, module there, which is the Destiny Lab. That is the main laboratory used by NASA. Now this lab coming up here is the Kibo. This is from the Japanese Space Agency, and it's one of the largest modules on the station. It provides not only a pressurized work area, but there's also a logistics facility that sticks out the top, and a large unpressurized area where experiments can be placed. There is a little airlock in between a remote manipulator system, so you can uh, grab an experiment from that pallet, stick it in the airlock and bring it inside, instead of having to perform an EVA. So there is an excellent facility for performing uh, research in the vacuum. And that really is what this is all about. It's all about scientific research. Both doing the experiments on the station and the station itself is an experiment. And so I hope you've enjoyed this little tour of the space station. Thanks to Harbinger for making these models available. Uh, incidentally, the astronaut model is borrowed from Space Engineer, so thanks to Keen Software House for making an awesome game there. Thanks to the developers of Space Engine for making a a universe explorer which is so beautiful and thanks to everyone that has ever participated in the space station project it is an important step into space and i believe there will be many many more steps which will continue humans journey into space i'm scott manley fly safe